Rejoice, Jerusalem, and all who love her. Be joyful, all who were in mourning. Exalt and be satisfied at her consoling breasts. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is being offered for your intentions, and also two special intentions. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, Grant, we pray, that with the prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten towards the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the prince of Judah, the priest and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messages to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at the prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all the palaces of fire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and their his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbath, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest, while seventy years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven has given to me. And he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever therefore among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm response, let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. By the streams of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. On the aspens of the land we hung up our hearts. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. For there our captives asked of us the lyrics of our songs, and our despoilers urged us to be joyous. Sing for us the songs of Zion. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. How could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, my, may my right hand be forgotten. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. May my tongue cleave to my palate if I remember you not, if I place not Jerusalem ahead of my joy. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised up but with him, and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is a gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance, and we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might, have, might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but the people preferred darkness to light, because their, words were, their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might be exposed. But whoever loves truth comes to the light so that his works may be, may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Good day, everyone. I pray everybody's having a good Sunday. Uh, Good Sunday and an excellent Lent. Today we uh, celebrate Gaudete Sunday. We're halfway through our Lenten season, and this is usually also the time uh, when I'm at the church, I'll have the, the rose-colored vestments on. Uh, it's an option, and I always like using the rose-colored vestments. Uh, it, again, it's something just for a time to be joyful. The, the time of penance is almost through and that's what the, it's a reminder to us of that uh, but also we have this incredible gospel here where we have the well-known you know John 316 that's in all the stadiums everywhere you go every sporting event everything they'll show the sign it's inevitably somebody's holding up a sign that says John 316 and that's that's what we hear from today God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life and everybody knows that, but they frequently don't know what's happening afterwards and what's happening in the verses before. And our reading kind of gives us a, a clip of it. We know that Jesus is speaking with Nicodemus. And if you remember the whole scene, uh, Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night. Okay, He comes to him at night because he's afraid of you know the other he, he's a you know he's one of the the pharisees the scribes he's in that elite of the jewish uh religious uh life and so he comes to jesus at night out of fear you know for his for himself uh and he discusses with jesus his question is because christ said being born again and nicodemus takes this in a better, very literal sense because if you remember what Nicodemus says, he said, how can a man, you know, go back into his mother and, and be born again? So he's taking it in a very literal sense. And then what we get here is, is Jesus's response to Nicodemus. And it's an interesting thing because he's, he's reminding Nicodemus of a 
part of Jewish history that is very unique. Just so you know, Jews never, you don't find in Jewish artwork the father being portrayed, okay? You don't find where they make a statue, like we have the statue of the Sacred Heart. They don't have that. It's almost like an iconoclastic mentality. They don't want to make an image of God, but yet in their history, in this particular part where Jesus is telling him about this event that took place in the book of Exodus with Moses, and God tells him to make this image of the bronze serpent, okay? The Jewish people were in, is, and in the desert. They started um, cursing God because, you know, they're, they're in the desert and, you know, they're, they're susceptible to all these dangers that are coming towards them. And, and they start saying, we'd rather stay in, in Egypt because at least we had food, at least we had, you know, some order of safety. And so God then plagues them, if you remember from scripture, he plagues, plagues them with asps. So they have these snakes. And when they're, they get bit, they die. And again, the people groan, so grumble to Moses, and they go to Moses and say, you know, we, we know we angered God. What can we do uh, to end this plague? And God tells Moses, Fashion a, a bronze serpent and put it on the staff and hold that up. Uh, also, you know, it's one of the uh, symbols used frequently by hospitals. You know, it's a powerful symbol. So they have this bronze serpent. So they have this, if you will, I don't want to say idol. That would be too strong because God's telling them to make this. But they have this, you know, bronze serpent and Moses puts it on the staff and God tells Moses, Whoever looks upon the ser serpent, the bronze serpent, will be healed. And the thing is, the word that's used in their language is, will be born anew, will be born anew. So Christ is reminding Mo uh, Nicodemus, you remember what Moses did with the bronze serpent and the people were born anew. That's how you must think about being born again, being born anew, uh, because then they were healed. Okay, so we have this incredible image of God giving the people of Israel in the desert the actual, um, you know, taking that initiative and giving them that the way to be healing, the agent, if you will, of the healing, this bronze serpent. Now, it's not the bronze serpent who's giving the healing. It's God giving the healing because the people put their faith in God and say, I will look upon this bronze serpent because this is what the father has asked of me to do i will look at it in obedience again which is then you know uh, overcoming the sin that they fell into i'm going to look at the serpents in obedience to the father's will and that's how they're they're being healed and jesus is comparing himself to that saying the son of man also will be put on a cross he's going to be Put on a, a staff if you will and he will be lifted up and those who look upon him and follow him will be healed uh, so again we see that god provides the agents for healing now obviously christ much better i mean it's christ is the son of god um, but the the healing comes through uh, the faith and people putting their faith in the words of the father and christ making that sacrifice that brings about our healing but again, he's reminding us strongly, and that's, that's one of the things that's also kind of forgotten because it happens after John 3.16 is we are given a choice, and, and God says, here's my son. Believe in him. Follow him. This is how you find salvation. You know, you cannot reject him. And so it's, again, it's a strong statement that is being made here as Christ is saying, you need to put your faith in me. You need to, to follow me. And that is where the healing comes from. Just as the, the Jews were obedient to what the Father was asked them, so you have to be obedient to what I am asking. And so, yes, he gives us uh, a really strong, really strong words, beautiful words. 
if you will, in, in a lot of ways, John 3.16 is the heart of the entire scriptures. God so loved the world that he sent his only son into the world. And we have to remember that we also have our part to do as well in that. And that is to accept the sacrifice of the son, to accept the son, put our faith in the son. And that is also how we receive our healing. God bless you all. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave us his only Son, so that we might have eternal life. Trusting in the infinite love of the Father, we now pray. For those preparing to enter the church this Easter, who will receive the second scrutiny today, that God will free them from the deceptions of the world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hold public office, will imitate the goodness of God, who secures justice and the rights of all the oppressed, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That our parish community will be zealous in carrying out good works that draw many into the light of God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood and to the consecrated life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the sick, the hungry, the unemployed, and those facing difficult difficult problems, that God will touch them with his love and mercy, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to repent and turn to the Father in true gratitude for sending us his only Son out of love for us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the men and women in our military and our first responders. May they come home safely and soon, and may they, may they find peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for our, for all our sick and deceased. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, who are rich in mercy because of your great love for us, brought us to life with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. Let us always live by that life. We ask this as we ask all things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that they, they may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace of Christ. Yes, sir. Lamb of God. God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I, I am, am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Jerusalem is built as a city, bonded as one together. It is there that the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord. The body of Christ. Amen. At this time, we pray our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into the world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow for the blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. And have a blessed and wonderful week, everyone.